I'm Leslie Chihuly. I've spent the last 25 years of my life working with my husband Dale in the art world and telling stories about art and beauty and installations and doing exhibitions around the world. And I've been the chair of the Seattle Symphony. I was the chair for nine years and involved a lot in fundraising, building strong organizations, mentoring. And so it's interesting that as more and more discussion has been happening in the public around mental health, it was just a very natural thing for me to get involved in the conversation because of my own upbringing and seeing what I saw as a young child of a mother who was bipolar, a father who was probably depressed, and a family who definitely suffered from addiction, which we often come to find as part and parcel of, of the bigger mental health picture. So I really saw myself as a survivor, but also a success story, someone who can come through that learn and become a more deeply felt person. My mom, her name was Jo. She was very charismatic. She was independent. She was involved in, in her interests. She was a good mom. She made a decision when I was in about the third grade to remarry. And I sort of looked at that as the beginning of a really dark phase. She had big ups and big downs. And she, when she was up, certainly it was spending, it was parties, it was cooking, it was let's go on a trip. And when she was down, it was all the shades are down, she was in bed. Her cycles were getting more intense and her depressions were much more severe. And I know, as people do, you, you try to garner your energy you know, <laughs> the best you can to be the parent. And I know she did that, but it was very hard. I've been with Dell for 25 years and I've witnessed him and myself and our family and friends in the context of this illness. When I met Dale, he had not been diagnosed and he wasn't taking medication. He knew something was up because he was experiencing depressions. Dale's one of the lucky ones. He's been able to draw people around him, keep friends, keep family members close. He has a good character. That character, right, and that, that generosity and that personality and charisma that he has attracts people to stay with him. The person who's experiencing the mood disorder needs to feel safe around you. And if you're not able to also be vulnerable and admit that you're not perfect and that you have needs too and see you modeling that kind of healthy behavior. I don't know when we started to put kind of this martyr approach up on the pedestal, but I have sought out people who show me that it's actually okay to have some fun, to have some laughs, to see your friends, to take a trip by yourself, to take a trip with your girlfriends, to do things to fill your cup because you'll come back with a little bit more to give. I had to learn how to show my own vulnerability. There were so many things that I didn't want to talk about that had happened in my family because I felt ashamed. And it's taken me even now, I think I'm really just beginning to be able to talk more about the fact that my mom took her life. Frankly, to do what I do and to carry what I carry, it's a great unburdening for me to say, hey, this is my story. You know, I didn't get here because everything was perfect. I got here because there was a lot of pain and challenge and struggle along the way. There's great hope in knowing that there is care and that you can manage and you can have a successful life and career and family whilst suffering from a mental illness. You can live a full life, maybe even a fuller life, because there'll be things that you'll experience that other people won't. And you'll have stories to tell, experiences that will enlighten them and their worlds.